Hello and welcome. My name is Marco Mendoza, and I am the Assistant Director of Client Services here in the Office of Financial Aid. And today I'm joined by one of my colleagues from the Office of Financial Aid. Hi, everyone. My name is Jennifer Villa Gomez, and I'm a Quality Service Representative here at the Office of Financial Aid. And throughout this presentation, we want to take some time to to speak to you about what you can expect now that you are a student here at CSUF and how what steps you can do to continue to fund your education here at CSUF. We want you to know that we are one of your partners here throughout your journey as a student, as a Titan, and we are happy to assist you throughout this journey and know that you can always reach out if you ever need some additional assistance. But throughout this presentation, we will be going over some of the financial aid basics, how you can understand your portal, understanding your financial aid award package, as well as answering some of the most commonly asked questions that we get from our students. But we want to start with the most important part of, of the application process of the financial aid process, which is applying for financial aid. It's starting with the two applications that most students are able to submit, which are the California Dream Act, otherwise known as the CDA, or the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, otherwise known as the FAFSA application. And when we start with the CDA application, it's an application that students can find on csac.dream.ca.gov, and that has a priority deadline of March 2nd, although students can still submit their applications after the March 2nd deadline, as well as uh, this being an application for students who live in California and meet AB 540 eligibility requirements. Now, for those of you who may not be too familiar with what AB 540 stands for. It stands for Assembly Bill 540, and it is a California law that allows students who previously were not eligible to apply for in-state tuition, uh, for to apply for uh, financial aid and, and uh, in-state tuition uh, now to be eligible for the in-state tuition fees as opposed to out-of-state fees. Uh, this is also an application for students who have a U visa or TPS status. And next, the free application for federal student aid. This is an application that is probably the most common application uh, here at CSUF. It's one that students can find at studentaid.gov that also has a priority deadline of March 2nd. Although once again, students can still apply after that specific de uh, deadline. Uh, this is available for students who are US citizens or eligible non-citizens who have a valid social security number as well as a valid high school diploma or GED. And lastly, we want students to know that for both applications, our school code is 001137. For those of you who are FAFSA applicants, these are the forms of financial aid you could potentially qualify for, starting with the grants. We have things like the federal Pell Grant, federal work study, and the TEACH Grant. When we look at our state forms of financial aid, we have things like the Cal Grant, State University Grant, or the Middle Class Scholarship, all which can pay at least a portion of your, tu of your tuition fees, as well as things like the Chafee Grant and the Equal Opportunity Grant for those of you who may be in the EOP program. When we look at our loan options, we have our federal subsidized and unsubsidized loans, as well as for those of you who might be uh, still dependent students, our Parent PLUS loans, as well as the private loans, or otherwise known as the alternative loans that students can qualify for. And if you are a California DREAM Act applicant, this is, this is one of our CD applicants. Uh, students are eligible to apply for any private scholarships, uh, both at CSUF as well as outside of CSUF. We definitely encourage not just CDA applicants, but all of our applicants to, to look for different scholarship opportunities, as well as state university grants, Cal Grant, Middle Class Scholarship, DREAM Loan, and the DREAM uh, Service Incentive Grant. One of the things I want to point out for our CDA applicants is that the forms of financial aid you see are state forms of financial aid. So uh, DREAM Act applicants, CDA applicants are not eligible for any forms of federal grant or federal loan options, just state financial aid and scholarship funding. Now we want to take some time to answer some of our more commonly asked questions, starting with, can I make changes to my CDA or FAFSA after submitting it? And we like to let you know that while you can make changes to your application, we encourage you to please contact our office before you, meet, before you do so, because it's not always necessary for students to make changes to their application. So if you feel like you need to, you're welcome to, but know that we encourage you to contact us first. Uh, our next question is, can I submit a DREAM Act, a CDA, or a FAFSA after March 2nd? And yes, you can absolutely submit your application. If you haven't done so already, we definitely encourage you to do so, uh, but know that you would no longer be considered a priority applicant, which means that you may be considered for uh, a, a form of financial aid that doesn't always cover your tuition and campus fees. 
our next question is, where can I find my financial aid award package? And while we will go over that in just a few moments, we wanna let you know that it's on your CSUF student portal on your student homepage. And our next question is, can enrollment deposits be waived? And we want students to know that if you have a zero expected family contribution, a zero EFC, you will have it automatically deferred by the Office of Admissions. This is not something that we in the Office of Financial Aid uh, take care of. It's something that's done automatically through the Office of Admissions. And in our next slides, we want to take uh, the opportunity to, to guide you through the student portal and how you can better understand your financial aid award package. So uh, before we get there, we want students to know that before we can award you um, as an incoming student, as a newly admitted student, we must have a financial aid application on file uh, in order for you to be admitted. Uh, so you must be admitted and you ha must have a financial aid application on file. So this once again, the BAFS application and the California DREAM Act application. And if you're selected for verification by the US Department of Education, you must submit your verification documents in order to be awarded financial aid here at CSUF. So please keep an eye on your tasks and know that uh, you must submit requested documents by the due date indicated on your student homepage, uh, and that all forms must be completed and submitted in, with any additional documentation to the Office of Financial Aid in order for you to be uh, awarded and completed in time for your classes. And know that submitting documents late may result in, re in reduced eligibility of your financial aid, as well as delayed processing and potentially late payment of financial aid uh, funds with any initial payments having to be out of pocket. So uh, this let, just lets you know that you must submit your documents uh, by their intended due date in order for you to be awarded on time. And how can students submit documents? If you're a student that's been selected for verification and you see a document pending on your tasks on your student homepage, you have a few different options. The first is for you to look on, uh, to log on to our website, fullerton.edu forward slash financial aid and click on the secure document submission platform. You're able to upload documents electronically on here. You can also mail documents at the address listed here. You can fax at the number listed, or you can drop them off uh, during our office hours, our in-person office hours. Uh, and know that after you submit documents, uh, to please allow four to six weeks for them to process. And now I'll go ahead and allow my colleague Jennifer to present the next few slides. Okay, so now we'll be discussing the student portal. So your student portal login is your username at fullerton.edu homepage. And then in order to find it, you would click on students where the little arrow is pointing. And then after logging in, students can view their student, their Titan online and access the student homepage. Students are also encouraged to check their campus email regularly. We only communicate with students through the Cal State Fullerton email account. So it's important for you to constantly be checking your email just because if any documents are needed or once you're awarded, you would get notified via your Cal State Fullerton email. Now we'll be going over and how to find your task. So you could find your task under a student homepage under the task tab, which is where the little arrow is pointing. And in event any documents are needed, you will get notified through there. So it's important to just make sure to look at your task just in case if any documents are needed, you'll get notified there and you'll be able to submit them. And so in order to view your financial aid award package, you're able to find it on your student homepage under the financial aid tab, and you could access your financial aid award package there. So where the little arrow is pointing, you'll click on there, and that's when you'll be able to see your financial aid award package. And so understanding your award package, estimated awards are posted on the student homepage for incoming students. Grants are automatically accepted on the behalf of the student because it is free aid. So we automatically accept those grants for you. Um, the only thing that students are going to be accepting if they decide to take them out, it's loans because you do have to pay those back. So we don't accept the loans for students. And so the aid is subject to change depending on final eligibility. Disperse amounts depend on enrollment and dropping classes may result in having to pay some money back to the university. 
And so reviewing your award package, finalized financial aid award package will be available on your student homepage. Grants, again, will automatically be accepted on your behalf and you will receive an email asking you to view, accept or decline your loan. Loans can be accepted after July 1st. So again, once you've been officially awarded, you would get notified via email. So that's why it's important to just make sure to keep a look at your email because you would get notified once you're awarded. And so anticipated financial aid. Your accepted awards will be considered anticipated financial aid. If you're planning on taking loans, you must accept them in order to be counted as anticipated aid. Anticipated aid must be enough to cover all tuition and campus fees. If anticipated aid is not enough, the student will be required to pay the difference between tuition fees and financial aid to avoid disenrollment. So accepting loans. So when you accept your loans, you will first accept your loans under your financial aid tab on your student portal. Then the next step would be for you to log on to studentaid.gov, which is this website right here. And you will, with a little arrow, log in with your FSA ID login. And then you would actually have to complete an entrance loan counseling and master promissory note. You need to complete these two little items in order for your loan to disperse because if you just accept your loans and the entrance loan counseling or master promissory note, it's not completed, then your loan will not be able to be dispersed. Once you do complete the entrance loan counseling and master promissory note, it does take about three to five business days for us to receive the notification that it has been completed. And so now we'll be discussing financial aid disbursements. We work with student business services to pay accepted financial aid awards to the student. These disbursements begin the week before classes start each semester. All accepted financial aid is applied first to tuition and campus-based fees. Then if there's any the remainder and if you're living on campus, it could get applied to your housing charges. Any or however, if you're not living on campus, any reminder financial aid after tuition and campus space fees has been paid, will get refunded back to the student. So first, financial aid gets dispersed, tuition and fees, campus based fees gets paid. If a student is living on campus, it could get applied, you know, the remainder to their housing. Or if a student is not living on campus, that the remainder financial aid will get refunded back to them. And so cycle. Uh, cycle back around. So basically every year you have to renew, renew your FAFSA application. So you would have to apply and you know check your student homepage if there's any documents that are needed, submit documents if it applies to you and you get awarded. So the application for the 23-24 school year to renew it actually opens October 1st. So it's important to keep that in mind because every year in order for your financial aid to get awarded, you have to renew it. So just make sure to keep a lookout on that date and it's just best to complete it as soon as the application is out, which is October 1st, just to get it out of the way. So you don't forget because you know, as college students, you may, you have other things going on. So you could forget, but just keeping that in mind. And so commonly asked questions. If my family's financial aid situation has changed, what can be done? So you could contact our office and you, depending on your, your case, you could set up an appointment with a counselor or you know, we we'll, could advise you on what steps to take next. But you could definitely, um, we could figure out what and how to better assist you on the new financial changes that have occurred. And the next question is, when does financial aid pay for my tuition and campus fees? A stated financial aid disperses one week before the start of the fall and spring semester. So that's when it would get applied to your um, balance. Some more questions. Do I receive all of my financial aid at once? No, financial aid disperses at the start of every semester and is dependent on your enrollment at Cal State Fullerton. So what that means is you get one disbursement in the fall semester and another disbursement in the spring semester, and it depends also on the units that you're taking. The next question is, what happens to the financial aid left over after my tuition and fees are paid? If you have more financial aid accepted than the cost of tuition, campus fees, and you do not live on campus, you will receive the remaining funds in a form of check or direct deposit. So I would encourage students to enroll in direct deposit just because that's where you, you'll be receiving your refund sooner rather than a check. But you could also, you know, get it both ways, checks or direct deposit, whatever applies to you. 
And some more commonly asked questions. Can I schedule a meeting with the financial aid counselor? Yes, you certainly can schedule a meeting with the counselor. We would advise you to call us during our office hours. So that way we're able to set up an appointment and check our availability. And then next question is, who do I talk to if I have questions about tuition and campus fees? You could speak to Student Business Services. Their website is www.sbs.fullerton.edu. There will be the department that will be able to further assist you regarding any questions you have about tuition and campus-based fees. And now moving back, my colleague, Marco will go ahead and go over on some steps on how to contact us. Absolutely. So if you need to get in contact with our office, there are multiple ways to do so. And starting with what we like to call iTuffy. Now on your browser, when you visit our website and visit our Office of Financial Aid site as well, you'll be able to see a box that'll say iTuffy. And on here, you're able to type up your questions. Uh, as, as the example says here, when will I receive my financial aid awards? You'll be able to get a response um, that is automated, but that has been designed to assist you as much as possible. Um, so you're always welcome to, to navigate to our site and take a look at this option. As well as uh, going on our contact us page or our homepage and finding the financial aid questions tab. Um, so here students can log in as you know, so have students or prospective students or parents and uh, type up your questions and they'll be answered by one of our staff members electronically. We no longer have an, an email that's available uh, for students, but you're welcome to, to use this option and it's the same uh, feature as an email. And also you, students are welcome to contact us both in person and during our virtual hours. So Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, we're open from 8 to 5 p.m. Uh, on Wednesdays, we're open from 12.30 to 5 p.m. with our last walk-in being at 4.50 p.m. Our phone hours are open Monday, Tuesday, uh, and Thursday from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Wednesday from 12.30 to 6 p.m. with uh, these four days being our last call at 5.30 and Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. with our last call at 4.30. You're welcome to help uh, or call us to schedule virtual counseling hour uh, appointments, both via Zoom and, and via phone. Uh, and you can call us at the number that's listed here. And know that you can submit documents, once again, electronically through our website. We want you to know that we are here to help. The preliminary financial awards have been sent to a lot of our newly admitted students, if not most of the newly admitted students. And if you do submit uh, questions via our financial questions uh, tab on our website, know that you will be receiving a response within 24 to 72 hours. And that financially, again, financially counseling appointments are available for both Zoom, phone, and walk-in uh, based on our availability. Uh, and we may be able to provide additional options if possible. Uh, and that you may be able to update your financial aid application, either the California Dream Act or the FAFSA for the 22-23 academic year based off of your reflecting your current circumstances, if possible. So please get in contact with our office if you have any doubts, any, any potential questions in mind regarding your financial aid eligibility. And know that, again, we're here to support you and that Titans reach higher. So thank you very much for being here, for uh, listening to our presentation. And please contact us if you need any additional help. Thank you and take care. Thank you. Bye.